Hey guys, this is Jackie from Jack Gets Lost Down a Jack Gets Lost Down a Book Hole. Um, October's not quite over yet. Um, we have like um ten, eleven more days, I think, until the end of the month. But you know what? I'm probably not. I don't know if I'm gonna get this. Well, I might get the book I'm reading right now done before the end of the month. I don't know. Um, I'll probably definitely do a little reading after I'm done filming this, but I decided to go ahead and cheat and just go ahead and film my wrap up. Uh, I try to beat my record of getting seven books read in a month, but you know what? I'm just putting way too much pressure on myself. And part of the problem is that I now I am constantly going to the library and sometimes I get carried away and get like four books. Four or five books from the library, and then I end up neglecting my own personal collection of reads because, well, you know, I'm two weeks with those books. And yes, I could recheck them out, but there's some times where I don't want to keep the books forever. I want to, you know, be able to turn them in, you know, right as soon as I can, you know, and I don't want to. So, I am, I, I really only finished. Like, I guess four, I think I finished four books. Um, unfortunately one of them I don't have. Um, it was a library book. Um, which is The Dark Half by Stephen King. Um, I started that back in, I started that in September. And I just went ahead and I ended up continuing it through October. Um, The Dark Half is a Stephen King... Sorry, my dog is barking because he can see out the window, and my window has a great view of our driveway, and there's people constantly walking there because, well, there's a school there as well. Um, so anyway, I apologize for the barking. Okay, what was I going to say? Okay, so, um, it's his, well, it's his kind of, like, thriller horror novel. Um, it's about this writer named Tad Beaumont. Um, he is a literary writer. Of course, Stephen King, ha you know, he likes writing about writers. Um, he was, you know, he was, okay, he was a decent writer. He published a few books, like maybe a couple, or maybe only just a couple books. So he decided to create an alter ego character, you know, an, like a pseudonym writer who is... This, he writes, like, he writes completely different types of novels, like violent crime type novels. Um, the character's name is, the writer's, the right, the pseudonym's name is George Stark. Um, and then, like, and everybody loves those, the George Stark novels. They're, they sell, they're selling, like, hotcakes. But then one day, you know, this, I think he's a reporter, this reporter gets wind of this and has reason to suspect that George Stark is actually not real and that he's just some guy's pseudonym. So he investigates it and finds out, um, finds out about Tad and everything and tries to get in touch with him through his agents and all that. Um, finally, you know, Tad gets wind of what this guy's doing and decides he's not gonna, he is going to not let this guy get away with exposing him and he's going to expose himself. So he hires you know, a reporter for an account, you know, another reporter to, you know, do a story on how he is George Stark and that they are going to kill off George Stark. So they even have a grave, they even have a fake grave and everything and there's this whole article about it and there's lots of people involved. But then people's, pe the people involved start dying. And the weird thing in um, people, they end up getting murdered really brutally, and the creepy thing is that the prints look exactly like Tad's, but there's no way Tad could have done it, because he has an alibi and everything. So the, the, um, the police, of the sheriff of their, of the town where Tad lives, he gets kind of involved in the case, because, you know, one of the victims was someone that he knew and that he cared about. And he tries to figure this out, you know, solve this case. But it's just a really weird case. And it doesn't make any sense because, you know, the guy... Um, and then Tad ends up revealing to the sheriff that 
he, like, he tells him all of, he, you know, has reason to suspect that George Stark is real and he's the one who's committing the murders. Um, and he describes him and everything and this is, and it's very accurate. Um, but of course, you know, logically that, there's no way that's possible because George Stark is not a real guy. And then you kind of find out some. You find out some background about Tad that he, when he was a kid, he has he has a tumor. They his parents suspected that he had a tumor in his brain, and he goes into he goes to the hospital to get surgery to get it removed. But then it turns out that, like the doctor reveals, finds out that it's not a tumor in his head, but he actually absorbed. He ate his twin brother. Um. He absorbed him into his brain, and that's the in that actually is the reason is it is you know we slowly figured out that that is the reason why George Stark exists, that he is Tad's twin. So it's basically them trying to stop this guy and figure out in how George Stark doesn't want to die yet. Um, so that, and that's why he's killing all these people. And it's basically this race against time, scary thriller. I'm not, no, okay, so I'm not really a huge fan of thrillers. Because they're kind of predictable. And, I mean, sometimes it can be really exciting, like a thriller is supposed to be. But most times it just get boring and repetitive. Um, so I don't read, really, like, I went through this period where I basically read James Patterson's Women's Murder, Women's Murders, Murder Club. And that's kind of a thriller, and I just, I got bored with that series. It got very predictable and repetitive, like I said. Um, and plus, you know, when I was kind of on the verge of still trying to keep reading through the series, the guy, this guy that I was dating, he told me that James Patterson does not write his books anymore, that he pays someone else to do it for him. Like, he comes with the ideas and someone else writes them, and then he takes credit. I did not like hearing that. That kind of, you know, personally offended me because writing is a hard job. Especially creative writing. I think you should be the one to do it. To do the writing. I don't care how rich you are. I think you are you need to put in the effort. You can't take credit for someone else's effort. Even if it's just writing the book. You know. But that's just me. And I don't even know if that's true. So, but I'm just... And James Patterson, he's an okay writer. Like, I read, I tried to read his, my friend got me, um, a copy of Wizard and Witch, his fantasy series, and I just, I mean, it was kind of an interesting premise, but I just couldn't stick with it. I got bored with it after a while, um, and I just didn't continue. I didn't after the first book. Um, but this was pretty good, you know? I'm, I'm still not a fan of thriller, of thrillers, and... You know, I'm glad I just borrowed it from the library because I probably wouldn't buy it. It's one of the few Stephen Kings that I will actually buy. Um, because there is, I love Stephen, I'm really falling in love with Stephen King's writing, but not everything sound, everything he writes sounds like my kind of book. Like, The Cell, Christine, maybe. Christine, I might consider. But I really loved it. It is still my favorite. Salem's Lot, I love that one. I love the Dark Tower series. Um, I just bought The Shining, um, I actually did a, you know, when I did my book haul, I showed that to you guys, if you watched it, um, what else, you see, um, I'm trying to think, oh, Carrie, Carrie was pretty good, I like that one, um, but I ended up giving that to one of my, one of my best friends, because she's trying to expand her reading, because she, most of the time she only reads Ellen Hopkins books, so she's trying to, expand add more variety to her reading unfortunately now she's back at school so she doesn't have time to read anything any of the fun stuff um luckily for me i only have this job so i have more time and i'm also only part-time at the job so only i only work four to five hours so i have more time to read and do stuff like this um but she does not because she's you know i think she probably has a job and then she's also studying and reading the bo those boring huge textbooks well although it depends on every textbook is boring if you really enjoy the subject it can be kind of interesting but just textbooks are just written so dryly um so it was it was a good very entertaining read 
I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. I was just, I was very entertained. I enjoyed it. Um, it was very, you know, I liked that it was, you know, in that dark, it had a lot of dark humor in it that I liked. Um, it was a little cheesy at times. Um, but it was still really, it was still really good. Um, I think I gave it four stars on Goodreads. Let me, ch um, well, let me check. I have a little, I have a bullet journal. Oh, actually, wait, I just realized I could have checked on my computer, but I, went, I got up, so. Um, yeah, I gave it four stars. Um, and I kind of, I really liked how it dealt with the, the fear of, like, this idea of an alter ego. This, you're being afraid of yourself, essentially. You know, your darker self. I like how it very much dealt with that, and how George Stark is kind of like, Tad Bowman's darker half. And that's not the first time he's dealt with this. Um, he also, one of the other books I'm still kind of reading right now is um, Secret Garden, Secret Window, Secret Garden. I've seen the movie a bunch of times. Actually, it's one of the movies I watched this month. Um, the one, and that kind of also deal with a writer and how they create an alter, they create this whole new world and an alter ego and they have this darker half. Um, so I, I really, that, I like that aspect of it. Like, I like psychological thrillers. If I read thrillers, I'll read psychological ones that really delve deep into the person's psyche. I like that. And so that's why it still, this still got four stars. Because I still, was very entertained. It was still a very compelling read. But it wasn't, like, my favorite Stephen King. Okay, so, like I said, I no longer have that... Okay, so I've only finished two other books. I'm almost done with, um, with my current read. I um, I don't know if I'll, but the thing is, I don't know if I'll get it done before the end of the month. I might. Um, I'm definitely gonna do some reading after I'm done filming this. So next we have the next book I read was The Vanishing Game by. Um, by Kate K. Myers. Why are there people in the window? Um, I remember I got this years ago. Um, actually it's a Barnes and Noble in, in, um, in Baltimore. That's a Barnes and Noble. That is a nice Barnes and Noble. That is a, that is a two-story Barnes and Noble. And that is an awesome one. I miss that one. I, I miss... Yeah, and I also, of course, I also miss Borders books. Um, that was before um, it became Books a Million, the, the bookstore in, our, in my old hometown. Um, but anyway, so this was another kind of psycholo like psychological thriller. It was one of those Race Against Time kind of books. Um, so again, we're dealing with twins. I've read three books that kind of deal with the concept of twins. I just realized that, um, you have Jocelyn and, um, Jack. They're these twin siblings, they, they, their mom was kind of a drunk, she dated really bad guys, and, um, she ends up abandoning Jocelyn and Jack at this little home called Seal House, um, with a bunch of orphan kids, but unfortunately the woman who ran it was a bit, you know, she was a weed addict, but she wasn't that great either. She even had, um, she was kind of abusive. Um, a lot of the kids had problems, like, you know, one of the kids was very, like, to bite people. Um, and one of the kids liked, you know, knives and stuff, so she, a lot of the kids were very violent. Um... So Jocelyn and Jocelyn and Jack were really close. They just had each other and they also had this other boy, um Noah. There was this other boy that they became friends with, Noah. Um 
so it's like it's years later, and Joc um Jocelyn like Jack has died, but Jocelyn receives this mysterious message from Jack's code under Jack that's written under Jack's code name Jason December. So she has reason to suspect, suspect that he might not be dead, and he is leaving her a clue to explain where he is, what's going on, and she gets into contact with her with her friend Noah because he's the only one who knows about Jason December. But of course, you know, naturally, he just thinks Jocelyn is grieving and struggling with letting go, and that Jack is not really alive. But then they end up going hunting for all these. But he, you know, wanting to you know, take care of her and help her out, um, he ends up going with her to find, to figure out these clues, because he's the only other person that is really good at solving these kind of clues that Jack leaves. So they basically are going, they go on this little trip where they, um, you know, where each clue leads them to another location that Jocelyn and Jack are familiar with, and they even reconnect with, like, with all the, um, all the other kids that they knew at the place, and, um, and the woman who ran it as well, much to, you know, Noah and Jocelyn's dismay. So it's, it's, it, this one was really cool. I like, I like the mystery aspect, you know, and them, and the clues were kind of cool. I mean, I didn't always understand it, right, and I could not figure it out all the time, but, I mean, of course, I didn't take the time to try to figure them out, but I like that, I like the concept, the concept of them trying to, um, solve these clues to figure out if Jack is actually alive. I really liked Noah and Jocelyn, I thought they were really cool, really cool people, um, and I gave this one, let's see, what did I give this one, what did I give this one? I gave this one five stars. I really, obviously, I really like this book. Um, and I definitely would recommend it if you like, you know, mysteries and stuff. And like I said, it's a kind of, it makes me think of a thriller a little bit. Okay, so that's The Vanishing Game. Okay, so, um... Then the next book I finished was The Boston Girl by Ania Diamant. I, Diamant. I, I don't, I can't know how to say her last name. But she is the same author who wrote The Red Tent. Um, that was really popular for a year, a couple years ago. Um, okay, so this one is about this young woman. Um, what's her name? Abby Baum, who is, she's a Jewish girl, um, it's her, her mom, and dad, and her two sisters, and it's kind of, this book kind of is a chronicle of her life, and how she tries to get out from under her mother's thumb, and tries to get a job, and go to school, and everything, but her mom is very much, you know, proud about them finding husbands, and becoming, learning how to be housewives, and, um, and this is around, like, the turn of the century, I believe. And it's about this girl, about, you know, um, Addie's life and how she gets a job, like a, a typing job. She gets to go to this special school, um, despite her mom's, you know, distaste of it all. Um, her sister gets married to, you know, her boss, I think, her older sister does. And then she has another, and another sister is already married, but her mom doesn't really approve of her old, her other her older sisters her other older sisters like lifestyle um and this is this is basically a coming of age story um and you know she dates got she goes through a few guys until she finally finds the one that she wants that she falls in love with and marries um so it's basically this coming like i said it's a coming of age story it was really good. I really love this book. I love those kind of coming up age stories. You know, um, just like the historical ones, not the contemporary ones. I like historical coming of age stories rather than contemporary. Um, and I actually, this is not a spooky book, obviously, but as you can see by the colors, 
I decided to re I decided to read it, and it was also a book that was given to me by I mentioned I mentioned my elderly neighbor. Um, he reads too, and he's been he will give me some of the, their books, like because you know they for, because you know his wife is wanting him to get rid of not have not have so many books unless he like continuously reads them again, I guess. So he gives them to me. Um. I, I really love this book. I really enjoy it. I love the turn of the century. We don't see a lot of stories about the turn of the century. Um, we've seen like ones that are like set in the 1800s or the 20th century or the 21st century, hence contemporary fiction. But you don't see a lot of stories in twenty, you know, in the turn of the century. I mean, oftentimes they are about, and if you, you do see them, oftentimes they are about. Like World War One, which is okay, which is good and all, but I mean that's that's actually that's why I love that I now love the show Downton Abbey, because it's turn it's a that same time period. Um, see I, on Goodreads I gave this. I also gave this one five stars, and if you like historical fiction coming to Bane stories, I definitely recommend this. It's it's really good, and it's easy to read. Um, but it's also, like, you know, it's a mature read. I mean, not mature as in has a lot of not, like, mature content, but, I mean, except for maybe what young girls went through in that time. Okay, you know, I'm gonna shut up now. Um, I am so bad at this. I am so sorry, you guys. I'm just really bad at this. So, um, that was The Boston Girl. I definitely, like I said, I recommend this book if you like, you know, historical fiction. So, okay, so now I'm currently reading, uh, um, I'll go ahead and talk about the book I'm almost done with. I am currently reading Nora Roberts' is The Dark Witch. I'm not done with it yet, but it is it was a pretty good read. Um, but you definitely can tell it's written by a Romeo, an author who normally writes romance. She definitely has the the cliches of romance novels, I feel like. I actually my one of my best friends, my best friend Terry, who loves romance novels, I did tell her that I think she might like this. I'm not gonna push it, but I didn't recommend it to her, you know, saying I think she like would like it. Um, um, <laughs> so I love how the I love how these pages are done. You know, they look very like old fashioned, like something out of an old book. I, I think that's really cool. And the other French flaps, like a really beautiful picture. But I really would, although I wonder, I would, you know, if this was hardback, I could probably take, I could take this off, actually. I wish I could, but nope, it's not hardback, it's paperback. Um, I said, I am more than halfway, um, sorry, my doggy, my other doggy, Sophie, is right up in my face, and I'm sure she's hungry and wants her dinner. But it is a little early for that, and yes, it is, it is early, it's not time for dinner yet. You can wait. Go on. Go down. Get down. Go on. Get down. So I'm on chapter 12, and I think there's like 21 chapters. Um, there's This is the first book in a trilogy, actually. So I already have the second book. What is that book called? Um... Shadow Spell, I have that one, and I gotta get Blood Magic, because I do want, as of right now, I do want to continue and read the rest of the trilogy, but I will probably donate it to the used bookstore. Um, which I did see, they did have Nora Roberts books. Because yesterday, I went to the bookstore to get it, to see if they had the third one. They did not have the third one, but I know they have some Nora Roberts books. Which, that probably means her romance novel, her romance novels, her traditional romance novels. But, like, the reason why I say it has the romance tropes is because, like, it has the whole 
sexy, broody, cranky, you know, cantankerous guy, and the girl can't stop thinking about him, and she's drawn to him and everything. They had that, and but then there's the the bad guy who she's also drawn. She can't. She's he's trying to pull and draw her to him too, and it's. Um, I do love the setting though. I love that it's in Ireland. Um, although I almost prefer Scotland over Ireland, but I love both Scotland and Ireland. But this is. I'm going to be reading this. Um, so I'm almost done with that. Um, I'm also reading two other Stephen King novels. Um, Four Pet Secret Garden, Secret Window, Secret Garden. I'm almost done with that. Um, I think. Well, no, I'm not almost done with it. But um, this one is basically. Um, one of Stephen King's novellas. It's about this again. It's about another writer, um, and he's a divorced right. He's divorced, so he's kind of living in the sticks right now, in this little cabin in the woods, and working, trying to work on his next novel. But then he receives a knock at the door, and it's this guy from Mississippi, John Shooter, who is telling him he stole his story. So it's basically about this guy. It's about the guy. Um, his name is, the main guy, his name is Mort Rainey. It's about him trying to prove to John Shooter he does not steal his story, but John Shooter is not happy, is, does, you know, will fight back and does a lot of horrible stuff, stuff like he kills um, Mort's kitty, his cat, which oh, I still, like, I can't watch when he kills the dog, because in the movie it's a dog. Um, but either way, I, the idea of this bastard killing his cat and dog his cat, you know, which, which it makes it even worse when you find, you know, it's even worse later on. But he does a lot of horrible things to get revenge. Um, so it's it's really good so far. Of course, I know what's gonna happen, so I'm not surprised about anything. I do know that the ending is little is a little bit different, but you know, I imagine it's not. You know, still the same. You know, the same result. I'm also still continuing with it, which is the book we're reading for a big books book club. Um, I haven't. I'm basically on the part with Beverly, but I'm still not very far into it. She has just left Tom Rogan, her husband, and is on her way back to Derry, and that's as far as I got in that one. But I will continue that soon. It's just, it's taking me a long time because there's so many other books I'm reading. Um. Let me go ahead and go to this one first. Um, okay, so I also read The Upside of Unrequited. I thought it was cute and entertaining, but I just wasn't in love with the book. There were some things I didn't like about it, and I just, it was it was good, you know, but it wasn't great. Um, I gave this three stars um, on Goodreads. Um, okay, so I'm also reading, let's see. These, these two are the actual books I got from the, um, the library before, but then I ended up buying, going ahead and buying my own copies. East of Eden by Steinbeck and The Secret History. I was trying to read these, but it just, it was too much. Uh, this has one of those stickers on it. Yay. Um. So I, uh, but I've taken a break from those. Let's see. Okay, so I also got, um, like I said, these were the books, the other books I got from the library. I started these, I started all these books, um, um, this is, I didn't get very far, so there's really not much to talk about. Um, the same thing with this one. Um. What's cool about this one, what I like about this one is, I, is that there might actually be a possibility of a, um, a werewolf, but there might not be. I will be disappointed, though, if it turns out there's not, and it's just some crazy guy. Um, and this is the other one that I got. Miss Houdini, I talked about this, is about Houdini's wife, and how she believes that 
Harry Houdini is sending her husband Harry is sending her messages from beyond the grave. That's basically what I got from the summary. Um. Okay, so I type in all those, and then I'm also going to on like like either I think on Halloween like during the day. I'm going to read some of these, which is, this is basically a not, these are two nonfiction reads. This one is about, um, a ghost at the Hotel De Cron Del Cronado, that is a hotel in, um, um, what is it, oh, dang it, Colorado, um, I think Colorado, where is it? I don't know if this was we went from California or was this a um it doesn't say if it's I can't remember if it's California or Colorado. I can't remember what's what um this is a true story about a ghost that a woman that stayed at um killed herself at this hotel and there's a lot of, there's still a lot of sightings and they believe that she haunts the hotel so this is the true story about that and this is um the hauntings of Williamsburg Williamsburg Yorktown and Jamestown my sister went to school in Williamsburg Virginia at William Mar at William and Mary so during that time, um, we went to visit her, of course, and I saw this book at the bookstore because I can't go anywhere without buying a book if there's a place to buy books. So I got this years ago because my sister is out of college and she's married with two boys. It's been years and I've had this book for a long time. Um, so I'm going to, I might read this on Halloween. Or maybe start this on the 29th and continue reading. It depends, of course, you know, with work and everything. I'll check and see and look at my schedule and see if I'm working on the 20, you know, on the 29th through the 31st. I'll have to check. Um, but I definitely want to read this. I think it would be perfect for Halloween. Do a Halloween read about ghosts because personally, that is a thing. It is one of the scary types of story horror that I like is ghost stories. So I'm going to read those. Okay, so that is my sort of wrap up of this month. I'm not quite done, but I'm going to continue reading The Dark Witch today and try to finish it by the end of the month. Maybe with just enough time to read those two and maybe read some of these others. I'll probably have to check those, recheck those three out. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. Happy reading!